Have you ever wondered, could I find a violin for, say, $100 or maybe even less that actually works? We're going to be exploring that question and more in this video. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at a violin that was sent to me by Glary Music. This uh, vi uh, violin is the Glary GV402. They have a number of models, but this is the GV402. Um, the interesting thing about this violin is it currently is on sale um, at $89.99. Although according to their website, the normal price is $109.99, which is still quite a, um, quite a deal considering that the shipping is free, so you really can't go wrong. So in this video, we'll be um, unboxing it, looking at all the things it comes with, We'll be um, setting it up and um, showing you some tips on tuning. And then you can hear what it sounds like, and then I'll be giving you some of my opinions about it. If you don't feel that you need all the tuning information, the setup information, I'll have some, um, some um, bookmarks in the description so you can go right to the section that you'd like to, like to see. So we're going to start out by unboxing and taking a look and see what's inside. So this violin comes with an oblong case, although it is very lightweight. I believe some of the instruments they sell come with um, smaller cases. So on the top we have um, a zippered pocket, probably for music. On the, the back we have, um, these rings are for backpack straps if you wanted to carry it around that way. The case does zipper um, shut and there's also a latch here. So this um, whole instrument would be a very good deal for the money just for the number of things that come with it. So we're going to have a look at some of those things and then we'll actually look at the violin. This little dial on the top is a humidity gauge. So if you happen to live in a climate that has a dry season, that's helpful information to know because you might need to humidify the instruments during those months just to keep the wood from cracking. So we have um, Instruction sheet has the parts, tells you how to um, how to take care of it. The violin comes with a whole set of strings already installed, but they also have included an entire extra set. So if you break a string, you're still good to go. This setup actually has about everything you would, you're going to need to get started. If you look behind this little trap door. These are the um, backpack straps. Uh, for those rings that we saw. Also included um, rosin for the bow. And one very neat feature is uh, an electronic uh, tuner and metronome. This does require um, two double, uh, AAA batteries, which are not included. They also have included a shoulder rest to help hold the violin. This case actually has a place for the shoulder rest, which is not the case with all um, cases. On the top here we have two bows with real horse hair. So if you know anything about bows, you know that from time to time the hair wears out and you need to have it replaced because it does um, no longer sticks to the string so you don't get much sound. So where I um, live, the average cost to replace the hair in one bow starts at $65 to $70. But they've actually included two bows with brand new hair, so that is quite a deal. And then we have the actual violin. The only assembly that's required is putting the bridge on. I believe the bridge is, bridge is here. Actually, this actually, it has two bridges. So the reason that they ship it without the bridge on, I believe, is because when the violin is fully tuned up, um, if the bridge were to fall during shipping, the um, pressure is um, quite a bit, and the top of the violin is quite thin. So if that were to fall with that much um, pressure, um, it could cause quite a few issues. So better to be, um, better be safe than sorry. So here's the violin. We'll see if you can see if you can see it. Um, I'm actually acting as the cameraman as well. So, but there's the there's the front, 
and there it's back. Uh, looks quite impressive for the, um, for the price, I would say. So, um, as I said, the only assembly that's really required is putting the bridge on. So, in the next part, we're going to walk you through that a little bit, and we'll get it all set up. We're going to go ahead and set up the bridge. This is the only part of the violin that actually requires a little bit of assembly. So, um, first of all, you might need to loosen the strings just a little bit, just to make sure that the bridge will fit on the strings, and then be able to... Um, go upright at a 90 degree angle. So to loosen the strings, you're going to turn the pegs toward you if you've got the violin sitting in your lap the way that I do. So um, you may notice that the bridge is not the same height on both sides. It's higher on one side. We're going to want that higher side to be on the left. So we're going to put it underneath the strings. We're going to turn it up so that it's standing, standing straight up with the feet on the flat part of the of the top. If you look at the um, look at the, the F holes on the sides here, there's a little notch in the middle. We're going to line the feet of the bridge right with that, that inner notch. You check the bridge and make sure that the strings are about the same, um, same width apart. This one kind of wants to fall into that little area there, so I think we'll just let it do that. Um, in, the, uh, in the tuning process, um, you may find that the bridge will start to tip a little toward, the, um, toward the, um, the fingerboard, and we don't want that. So, um, so you may have to keep turning, uh, pulling on the top of the bridge just to get it, um, get it so it stays, it stays at that 90 degree angle. So we're going to go ahead and tune. So um, now we're going to go into the actual tuning process because the strings are not going to be tight enough yet. Um, so there's two uh, two ways to tighten or loosen the strings. Um, you're going to need to use the pegs. Um, and that's if you need to turn quite a bit and you're probably going to need to do that. So um, you find the, find the peg up in the top that is connected to the string that you're needing to use and to make it tighter you're going to turn it away from you and if to loosen it you're going to come toward you now when you get it so that things are pretty close then you can go to the tuners which are down below and you find the tuner that is connected to the string that you're on and if you turn it to the right that would be like clockwise that makes it uh, higher and turn it to the left that makes it lower um, the strings uh, the lowest string is on the left side it's the G string Next door is the D, it's a little bit higher. Next um, door to that on the right is the A string, and then the E string. So I would go ahead and turn, turn the, um, the inner pegs um, a little bit. And you're also going to notice that they may not stick that well. And so uh, as you're turning, you can set your hand on the other side of the violin. You could set it on the neck or on the, on the shoulder part here, and push, um, push the peg toward the opposite side. So if I'm on the left side here, I'm going to be pushing the peg to the right as I turn it, and that's going to help it to stick. And I'm not anywhere close yet. That's the D, the D string. I'm going to do a little bit of the A string. And the G. E on the right side, that's the one that has to go the tightest. And then I'm also checking the bridge to see if it has started to move forward. And this one, to me, is a little bit forward because the feet aren't quite flat. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back just a little bit. So um, this particular violin came with a came with this tuner. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but if you um, start to pluck the strings into the tuner, it will actually, when it's right in tune, it will light up. It's all green. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see that from here, but I'm going to set that here. I'm going to start to I'll try the try the D, D string here. The 
this one wants to wants to unwind a little bit, so I have to really push onto that that uh, right side. If you don't have a tuner like this, you can actually um, find a number of free ones that you can download for a phone or for a tablet that work really well, and they will they'll light up or have a way of telling you when it's when you're right on pitch. I There's the A, it's almost there. So now, now things are pretty close. So now I'm at the point where I could probably use, turn the tuners to change things. All green now. A is Amoya. A is basically all green. G. G slipped just a little bit. Again, you might have to push a little bit. It's on the way down. I'll work with it. Um, you will find uh, when you're first setting up a violin or when you're putting on new strings that they take, um, I don't know, uh, for me it's usually been like a day or two to break in so you may find that they keep going out of tune so all right um so we'll um go ahead and go to the bow uh, next we're going to take the bow i should mention that if you don't play the violin already i can understand where the setting up the bridge could be somewhat of a challenge and if you if that is the case for you if you um, had a, a music store where they um where they um, sell violins and work on in, on violins, someone there could probably do it for you. Actually, if you have any friends that play violin or any teachers, most teachers would be able to set up the bridge for you um, and even help with tuning if that were a need. So um, to take the bow, um, when you're not playing with the bow, it's a good idea to keep um, loosen the tension so that the stick doesn't warp. So um, to play, you're going to need to tighten just a little bit. So you take the screw on the end and you turn to the right. And general rule, I usually tell my students: if you look at if you look at the distance between the hair and the and the stick, don't look at the at the ends because it's already a big space at the ends. But if you go about halfway down the stick, and see if you can stick your pinky right between the stick and the hair and have it have it fit fairly comfortably. I don't think it's in the camera there. That's a that's a good gauge. You might need to adjust a little bit, but that's um, that's the general rule. If you can stick your whole hand through, it's probably a little too tight. So we're gonna take the um, rosin, take it out of the. I took it out of the holder. So if you uh, when you look at the rosin for the first time, it's um, it's very shiny. Um, in, some people say I think even the instructions said that you. Um, could scrape it with a, a a sharp object or even use sandpaper to get it going, but I find if you just rub on it enough, it's going to um, it's going to do that. So it will get dirtier and cloudier, as which means it's working. And uh, the um, I discovered both of the bows um, that came with the violin have um, no rosin on it at all, so they're very slippery, which means when you play, you won't get any sound at all. So you need to uh, need to rub the rosin and. and the first time it's going to take a lot. Um, after that, it won't take so much. So I um, actually just re recommend scrubbing it along the hairs, and I can feel part of the 
part of the uh, hair is sliding around on there, so that needs needs quite a bit. If you get too much on, you it may it may scratch the sound a bit, but it will wear off. So you can already see that the rosin is starting to um, starting to cloud up a bit. I'm going to finish that up and then we will hear what the violin sounds like. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. So I'm going to share uh, a few thoughts on things I really liked about this violin. And since it is a review, I'll also share a couple things that maybe I wasn't such a fan of. So the first thing that I'm definitely a fan of is the price. Um, you really can't go wrong, considering all the things that um, comes with it. Um, everything you would need to start out, including the shoulder rest, an extra set of strings if you break one, um, this violin actually had two bows, and then, then the um, metronome tuner that came with this one is quite a, um, um, quite a deal. So um, definitely, um, definitely can't go wrong with this um, for this amount of money. Um, second thing, I was actually very pleasantly surprised was the sound. Didn't know at all what to expect, and I would say this um, instrument has. Um, pretty even sound across all the strings, and that's not always the case. Uh, I've had um, some students bring in similar, um, maybe even a little more expensive instrument um, instruments. Um, one came from a very, um, very uh, well-known mail-order website. You would um, know it if I mentioned it. And I found on the, um, several of the violins, I saw the G string. That's the lowest string just sounded a lot different than the other strings, a little and uh, not real pleasant. So this was quite a pleasant surprise, um, the sound. Um, the um, violin seems to be fairly, very solid, so uh, that's definitely um, a plus. Now if you were looking to, um, uh, you could not expect to spend a hundred dollars and get the um, old Italian or old French sound. Um, but um, you know, certainly, certainly a decent sound um, for the uh, for the price. Um, if you were starting a hobby or starting something, um, beginning on something, chances are, if you stuck with it, um, you um, find the um, need or the desire to um, upgrade your equipment. That would probably be the case with this. And there are some things that um, that um, you can't always notice or appreciate when you're um, just starting out. So. Um, definitely a good um, setup for someone just starting out with the violin and doesn't want to make a big investment. Um, this could work for you. Okay, now for a few things that maybe I wasn't the greatest fan of. Um, first off would be the bow. 
Now this violin came with two bows and they both work fine. Um, I, they, they didn't both feel the same. One um, felt a lot heavier near the bottom, a little thicker wood, and so that was different. But as I say, they both, they both work fine. When you get instruments like this that have everything included, sometimes the quality of the bow is what suffers a bit. So I didn't feel like um, these bows um, bring out the best in the sound. I, I would probably upgrade the bow um, if I was using this violin for a long time, probably to a, um, an inexpensive carbon, um, carbon bow would probably help to bring the sound out. Um, I found this violin um, a bit of a challenge to tune at first. I had some issues with the pegs slipping. And um, as you know, if, or, um, as, you, um, as you turn the peg, you push the opposite way to get it to stick. But part of the issue is that the holes where the pegs are, the pegs, there's quite a bit of space between the hole um, and where the end of the peg is. And if those were to be, um, to be uh, fitted so that the peg would go all the way in the hole, I'm guessing it would probably hold um, a little easier. That would be something a, a pair person could, um, you don't need new pegs, just need to shave a little bit of the peg so that it sticks farther in. Um, they're doing better now. It's just kind of a... Um, a challenge initially so that would be one thing um, if I uh, whenever uh, I break a string I probably will would um, switch strings over to um, I believe these these are um, they're metal um, metal on the outside I believe they have a steel core and I would probably switch to a, a, a nylon core string uh, I think that would open the sound up a little bit better. But it is great. They, there's an extra set even of these strings. So they, they work fine. That just might um, um, ease a little bit of the, even the tension on the instrument. So um, that's basically, um, still I would, I would definitely say this violin is a, um, uh, it's a good deal and it definitely would be um, suitable if you're starting out or um, don't want to invest a lot of money. You can you would do fine with this. I've been enjoyed getting to know it a little bit. Um, maybe, um, maybe when I've got the strings changed to a, a, um, an upgrade, maybe I'll come back on and um, let you see hear what it sounds like. But again, um, definitely check out this violin and um, uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to Glary for sending me this um, instrument. Um, you'll want to check out their website, check out this violin, and check out the other things they have. They also have um, I believe they have um, cellos and guitars, and so, um, and I don't know what all else. So, um, definitely have them a look. So, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.